Hello there, comic book fans. Uh, this is a video about a book that uh, I just borrowed from a friend. Um, it's called From Shadow to Light, The Life and Art of Mort Meskin. Now, Mort Meskin, this is the dust jacket. Mort Meskin was a comic book artist that I wasn't too familiar with. Being that he pretty much stopped doing comic books in the 60s uh, kind of explains that. But of course, I had known his name, and um, but not like I said, not a whole lot about him. He was a golden age comic book artist. He worked until um, he worked and he started work in the late '30s, early '40s, all the way through the '50s, and up until um, I think his last work was for DC Comics in the '60s, doing some of their war and uh, um, House of Mystery type books. But this was very interesting in that, you know, it gave us uh, his whole hi uh, biography and history uh, of what he did. And, and, um, and you know, I never realized, the, the two biggest characters he was known for at DC was, this is one of them, Vigilante. Who, once again, I wasn't terribly familiar with the Vigilante. He was a Golden Age character. There's a good picture of him. Uh, th there he is, there's Vigilante. He's a Golden Age character. He's got a, a, I guess he's a western type character, except he's in the present day, it seems. And Mort Meskin, there's some original art. One of the things I noticed about Mort Meskin inking himself in these is he uses a bit of whiteout. But Mort Meskin was one of, uh, according to this part, one of the two most influential kind of uh, uh, golden age artists, along with Jack Kirby, who of course we all know. But Mort, Mort Meskin, there's the vigilante. But Mort Meskin was nearly as fast as Jack Kirby, too, they say. I think, that, I think they gave some period from, like, 1948 to 1954 where Jack Kirby drew, like, 1,900 pages and Mort Meskin drew 1,800. So they, were, they, they, they said they were both, um, they both could complete, like, three, four, five pages a day while everybody else was struggling to get, you know, one page a day done. And here's interesting, too. The, these are pages, as they say in the caption, that, um, that he, had a, he had a correct and cut off and replace, but he thought enough of them to keep them. So, you know, he valued his work even way back then when people thought it was disposable. He kept the, s the scraps he could. But Mort Meskin, um, there's a part where they uh, compare him to Citizen Kane. Now he and a bunch of the, uh, some wonderful pages. He and a bunch of his um, contemporaries all went to watch uh, Citizen Kane. Here's there's two pages on how Citizen Kane influenced comics and how comics influ influenced Citizen Kane. Because Orson Welles was a big fan of comic strips and comic books and he took a lot of his storytelling from stuff that uh, that was done in the strips and comic books, and in turn they, you know, were looking at it in his movie again. But they say Mort Meskin was one of the, along with Jack Kirby, was one of the great influential experimenters in comic books with angles and scenes and how he told stories and how he set things up. They were the two, and um, Mort Meskin actually worked at the Jack Kirby studio, the uh, Kirby and Simon Studios, I think in the early 50s, it said. There's a wonder, some wonderful original art. He's got a nice line. A lot of times his inks are very black and chunky. There's Johnny Quick was the other um, fam famous character along with the Vigilante who he was... Uh, there's some really nice faces. And they say that uh, Meskin was also, you know, where Jack Kirby was kind of dynamic. Um, Mort Meskin was a little more subtle. And he also invented, this is something interesting, for Johnny Quick, he invented the, what you see now, when the multiple, because Johnny Quick was the other speedster, along with the Flash for DC Comics. So Mort Meskin was actually the one who invented this multiple poses for a really fast guy. No, there, there, once again, multiple, multiple poses. He was the one who uh, came up with that, that now standard speedster that you draw. There's one, there's, there's the comic book cover and the original art. Once again, it, showing off the multiple poses. 
I mean, but this was, like I said, he, the, with both Mort Meskin and Jack Kirby, they said, other cartoonists would uh, visit the office. He were, he had a studio in DC Comics at this time when he was doing Johnny. And other, other guys would come around, you know, to see what he was doing, to learn from him, because he was one of the ones who was really kind of out on the forefront. Very nice Johnny Quick doing all this stuff with graphics and... Uh, I think in Jim Steranko mentions in here that he learned a lot from Mort Meskin what, looking at his stuff. There's some various women. A really, really interesting book. I found, um, I really liked his artwork. Like I said, I, I've not known, I, I've, I've read quite a bit on comics history, but never anything about Mort Meskin. And he had, a, you know, a bit of a sad life, too, that he was married, had two boys, but then he had a b breakdown, and, his, and he couldn't take care of his kids, and, you know, he got a divorce, and then his wife had a breakdown, and then the boys had to go into foster care, and it was all, you know, his, his life was kind of a struggle to be uh, an artist. Matter of fact, he, they mentioned that he uh, specifically didn't want to get his kids too interested in art just because it was such a tough life for him. But he, they say he was a complete natural. He was uh, drawing all the time. And he was quite, and he, and he drew quite well and what appeared to be effortlessly compared to a lot of other guys who, like I said, he could complete three, four pages a day. Well, everybody else is, you know, struggles to get a page or maybe two done. But that's some really, some really nice stuff here from Mort Meskin. And um, I said, after his breakdown, he, you know, dropped out of comics for a while. I really like his... He's also well known for his use of uh, shadow and light, which, I sh as you can see from here, he's, he's really, really good at it. So nice. Like I said, he was one of the... He was working at the very beginning of comic books. Oh, some nice pencils. And then I think it was the the comic book hearings in the 50s drove him out of, you know, Golden Lad. There was another one he was famous for, they say. Once again, these, a lot of these are, you know, Johnny Quick, The Vigilante, Golden Lad, aren't necessarily heroes that are around today either, though kind of Johnny Quick and uh, The Vigilante are around a little bit, being that they're DC characters, but not a whole lot. But eventually, like I said, after his breakdown, he came back. That's when he worked for Simon and Kirby Studios for a few years in the early 50s. And then he uh, had a second breakdown later on in life uh, and was once again institutionalized for a while till he came out. And that's when he started, I think it was the early, late 50s, early 60s, he started working for DC Comics again with their House of Secrets and western lines but they say his work wasn't as good then and he wasn't treated well and he was completely disillusioned as much as and he like that he was one of these guys like jack kirby who loved comics and always experimented with comics and figured out how to do them back in the early days and everybody else came around to see how he did them it seems that my sound gave out right here uh, so I'm going to have to record this part, the audio part of this again. I still got the video. Oh, there's some nice pencil pages by uh, Mort that I'm showing there. I have no idea what I used to say, but oh, they, this is um, from when he was with Simon and Kirby Studios, and they invented the romance comics. That's when Mort was uh, working for Simon and Kirby. Uh, some really nice fine line work there. Uh, I think, I, I'm not sure if he inked that himself, but uh, here are some more. Love and Brides, and these are some penciled pages, and some more Mort black and white stuff. Ah, there's a uh, picture of Mort Meskin at his um, desk and working. Uh, yeah, that this is still like this is still the early 50s um, when he's working for. Oh, this was the last superhero story he did. It was an unpublished 3D book. I'm reading the caption there, which says uh, it was for Simon Kirby Studios, unpublished in the early 50s. The last superhero work he did, which is another reason, you know, we don't know him that well today. I know I certainly don't, is because he wasn't that big a superhero guy uh, in the end, which is what we remember. Oh, and here is, this is some of the comic strip work he was doing. 
And this is all big, this stuff. He, he was working on uh, these comic strips, and each of these panels is like nine inches wide. He loved to work big, so each one was like the size of a page. And here he goes. Yeah, this is some more of the comic strip work he was doing. I think it said he got paid for this, but it never got published for some uh, company. The Pirate Frogman. Um, but, like I said, by the mid-50s, he had his second breakdown again. Uh, here's a wonderful night. There's a crazy guy having a breakdown. He had a breakdown again, and like I said, the Keith Howard hearings wrecked comic books and drove a lot of people from comic books, and Mort was one of them. Uh, some more of the big work he did. There's some of his early uh, 60s uh, House of Secrets work, which is described as kind of generic and you can see that it is compared to his older work he just you know wasn't just oh and this was this is a wonderful piece this is the neighborhood he lived in downtown new york city greenwich village he liked to go out and sketch the neighborhood and he liked to go out and um draw at the docks and boats and that looks like coney island over there he used to visit coney island with his kids there are some boats in color uh, another House of Secrets cover he did. Some more 60s work. Tales of the Unexpected. I think that was uh, some earlier stuff. We have the original art and the printed art. Um, wow, that one's nice. The Forbidden Game. Yeah, he, his, his use of shadows and light was real. Those were his two sons. He drew paintings of as they were growing up. Uh, he was... A, he didn't, uh, he didn't get to see his sons a lot after his breakdowns because they were taken away from him. There was one of his uh, um, storyboards he did when he moved into, the, in the, after DC in the 60s, he moved into advertising. Uh, he worked for BBD&O, big advertising agency. There's some of his advertising work. They loved him at BBD&O because he was so fast and could knock out this stuff unbelievably. You know, all that 60s madman stuff, so he... He finally had a job that uh, paid him a good salary and was settled. He didn't have to scramble so much, but there were still tough deadlines in advertising. But he was so used to working fast and deadlines, he had no problem in that. As a matter of fact, at the end, he worked in BBD you now for 15 years until they sold their art department. And at the end, he was getting a little... He did those at jury duty. Those right there, he was bored at jury duty. BBD no sold their ad ad department. He, there was so he was basically freelance again. There was less work for him, and he wasn't as happy. And here's the stuff he did in his retirement. Uh, he kept working, he kept drawing, he kept painting all the time. He volunteered at a hospital, and he had a second wife who was uh, they said was very good for him. She organized his life a little better, and uh, he kept going. He was. Uh, it was amazing to read about him. Oh, there's some really nice black and white, black and white uh, pictures around the neighborhood. I think he lived in Yonkers at this time, and he was just one of the early giants of comics. Uh, it's interesting. Oh, he did these on toilet paper during his late BBD. You know, you and I talk, a paper towel just to keep busy. And he, it's just interest. You know, it's great to read about one of the giants of comics who I knew very little about. I mean, I, I know, I've, I've read quite a bit of comics history and not a ton about Mort Meskin, so it was just really interesting to read about one of the guys who was there at the beginning, who, you know, did it all, who was one of the most, two most influential guys out there. We all know the other guy, Jack Kirby, but this guy, I barely know his stuff. It's a nice fighting yank. I mean, he, he was there at the invention of comic books and he was one of the big inventors so that's some nice black and white work on that so you know check it out from shadow to light the life and art of mort meskin if you want to know a little bit more about the early days of comics <laughs>